Welcome back. If you're just joining us, my name is Jim Reyes. I'm a comic book illustrator, and uh, I'm currently inking an image for my portfolio. And this is an uh, image of Batman, and the pencils are by David Finch, a comic book superstar. And the tools that I'm using um, for inking this image are the Crow Quill Hunt 102, um, that is a, a nib. Uh, I am also using a Series 7 Windsor Newton, um, and it is a size 1 miniature brush. And I'm also using a Series 7 Windsor Newton size 2 round brush. This is an older brush, um, one that is worn down. And I keep my older brushes because they, they do serve a purpose, um, and that is when I'm spotting blacks. I don't want to use my good brush. Good brush meaning that it has a really nice fine tip, snaps back into place, and it keeps that fine point. Um, so I don't want to use that. Um, so then the, there isn't so much wear and tear on it. Um, and instead, I keep the older brush that no longer has that crisp, fine point on the tip. Um, and I use that to spot my blacks. The reason I'm using the same type of brush is because of the way the Kalinske Sable, um, and that is the hair on the end of the brush, the way that it holds ink. Um, it, it, it really holds a lot of ink on there. Um, and uh, it's a watercolor brush, and it uh, works very well with the type of ink that I'm using. And uh, the ink in this case here, is um, it is India ink and it is from uh, Coronor it is their universal ink um, and it is waterproof so it will stain your clothes if you uh, if you get it on your pants or if you spill it on your carpet um, so I've I don't ink <laughs> my luckily my my workstation where my, my desk is and stuff, it, it's over wood floors. So I don't have to worry so much about um, staining carpet if I spill ink. Because that can happen no matter how experienced you are um, when you're working with ink. So what I'm doing um, with this brush is that I am spotting my blacks. And I thought it would be uh, interesting to show... Um, spotting black um, so you get to see if, if you just join us there there are two previous videos um, and, and you, you can um, see the evolution of the image um, you know the nib work that I started with at the beginning in video one um, and get to see the evolution some brush work in video two and now some spotting black and how I spot my black people everyone does it differently and people use different types of uh, brushes, different types of ink. So um, even though if you're not using the same type of ink or tools that I'm using, that's okay. Um, when inking yours, um, just showing how I do mine and, and um, uh, you never know, it may work for you uh, and you may find it uh, much more comfortable for you. Um, or if you're an aspiring inker and you've never inked before and you want to try, this is a, a technique in a way that you can, you can use. Um, I use the exact same ink throughout my entire image. Um, I don't use different inks. Um, so uh, the tools that I use, they're all able to dip into the same ink. Generally, I'm, I'm, I use a nib for everything, even when it's borders or technical stuff in the background. Um, you know, and then my brush and everything is dipped into the same, same type of ink. And my ink comes in a very large bottle. Um, I showed it in the previous video, but just in case you're joining us now for the first time, um, you get to, this is the the larger um, eighth uh, fluid ounce of um, the ink, and uh, it's it's good ink. It's for paper and for film, and so it it dries um, fairly quickly, um, and uh, I, I like it. it. It is a little reflective it's it's not really highly reflective meaning that in when your light shines down off your drafting table um, I have an LED light but still um, you get very little 
reflection on it and that's usually the more ink you apply then the, a little the more reflective it becomes but I generally I you don't need to put a lot of ink down when you're spotting your black because you don't want your paper to warp and, and the ink's so wet you know that it, it'll absorb into the fibers so that large bottle of ink that you see I put it into this little bitty jar that I have um, this little jar is from Windsor and Newton I poured out their ink because I I don't like the the ink that comes from Windsor and Newton but I like the jar I like that the base is um, triangular and it's large um, to keep from knocking it over but the way I have my workstation set up and things are to my right and um, they are off far off enough away from this um, elevated um, small uh, table that I've made that I put on top of the flat surface of my computer desk and I have an L-shaped computer desk it um, keeps me from being able to knock over the ink I'm less likely to knock it over I'm sure that there's still that possibility but I've never bumped it uh, and I'm I'm it's still within arm's reach, so I'm able to reach over and dip in my nibs. If you've been watching the video, you'll you'll see my, my hand go off to the right off camera. It's because there is a bottle of ink there, the one I just um, placed under the camera. And I dip my nib in there. Um, I'm, I'm also able to dip my brush in there. Off to the right, um, I also have a scratch piece of, uh, I call it a scratch piece, but it's it's a scrap piece of Bristol board. Uh, the same exact 400 series Bristol board that I'm inking on right now. And it's the leftover piece that I, when I bought the art pad, it was wider and I had to chop it, you know, one slice through the uh, art pad, taking off three inches on the side. Uh, so that was a uh, 14 by 17. Uh, art pad of Strathmore 400 series Bristol board and uh, that scrap paper became useful that little extra piece because then I can tape it to the end of my desk um, on the side of my desk where I'm dipping my nib on into the ink the reason for the scrap piece of paper there is so that um, I can scratch off any extra little fibers, wear off any little extra ink uh, that I may have on, on the nib because I, I work with only a certain amount of ink on the nib. Sometimes I put too much on and I'm able to just kind of wear it off. And with the brush, the same thing. Um, I may get too much ink on the brush by dipping the brush in just a little further into the um, jar of ink than I was intending to. Um, so I then take my brush, rotate it onto the um, spare piece of Bristol board there and um, spin the brush around almost like a, like a rotisserie or something. Um, and I spin the brush on that paper just to wear off um, the ink and to get the amount of ink on the brush that I I want so that when I lay my line down I uh, am not you you know putting down too much ink on the paper and it allows more control of the line and that's the same thing with the um, with the nib I want a certain amount of ink on there. Generally, I don't dip the nib, the nib uh, tip in all the way. I um, just kind of lightly dip it into the um, ink jar, and then I um, still will sometimes scratch on that little piece of paper of extra Bristol board. To make sure I've got you know the right amount of ink and I'm getting the type of line 
quality that I want so that I have the control that I'm looking for. Because the more ink you have on your brush or your nib, the thicker your line is going to be when you lay it down. And uh, in comic books, there is a wide variety of lines that go in the artwork. Not every line is thick. So, um, sometimes I want the thin line. So, back to here, what I'm, what I'm doing here is I am spotting my blacks. Uh, and that means filling in my, the black area. Um, there are lines that are placed on the outside that I did with my nib to keep the shape and those are called holding lines so I fenced in the area that I will be filling in with black and you can also create holding lines with your brush like this you can make a line there where that's as far left as I want to go and then I fill in the area over here where I want and fill up to the line up to the left so I made the holding line on the left and filled in the line up to the left without passing that little fence that I made and the one that's to the left of it here on your screen um, I did those holding lines with the nib while I was working with the nib earlier and you'll find that you 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 are going to um, not only you can you you can but you're not generally aren't going to ink an entire image with just one tool like you would with uh, if you were penciling um, you're really gonna switch throughout the image um, pretty much through almost any anything you're inking so you can work in in different um, stages you can ink everything that needs to be inked with a nib and you'll you'll know what needs to be inked with a nib over time you know you'll 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 become comfortable with the tool you'll be able to identify what type of line that tool is going to give you and you'll look on the image and you'll be able to tell yourself okay I want this type of line work and my nib gives me that type of line work so I'm going to start with my nib or if you're more confident with the nib than you are with a brush or you favor the nib like as I do I, I favor the nib more than I do the the brush so I'll start with the nib and you, you can you can go around the image and ink everything that needs to be inked with the um, the nib and then move on a brush um, I, I generally work with that um, theory or that idea but then sometimes you know the nib um, wears out then when, when the nib the nib will wear out um, instead of putting in a new nib tip into the holder and continue on with the nib I will then switch to a brush and then start doing some brush work um, and that really just depends on how much brush is required on the image there's really not a lot that's needed with the brush and just make sure that I'm on here on camera because um, I'm trying to zoom in a little closer so that you can see the line work I want you to be able to even though this is spotting blacks but I want you to be able to see what I'm what I'm doing um, to help you with the um, visual learning um, so I will um, work with brush depending on how much brush is, is on the uh, on the image how much is required if there's not a whole lot of brush then sometimes you know 
or it's mood. Sometimes I'll just say, hey, I, I feel like inking brush. Give my wrist um, a break from the nib. Most of my brushes have the foam grips on them. And that's to keep my wrist and hand from fatigue and to gain better, an easier grip for control since I will be working over fine little details, detail areas and things like that. So the, the better the grip, less likely the tool is to slide out of my fingertips and the more control I, I can have over it. It's not really like surgery, you're not, maybe when you're spotting blacks, you know, it's almost like playing that game operation. You wanna get right up to that line, you know, without crossing that line over. Where in operation, you're trying not to touch the sides. But in this case, you're trying to get up to the sides of the, the holding line. But when you're inking and you're doing a lot of the detail work, um, you are um, throwing some of those lines fairly quickly. Uh, you make, like what I do is I create the base of the line and then I throw that line out by feathering it, you know, and, that, and that's how I create that line um, there with, uh, you know, creating a little triangular base and then throw it out. And that creates that little feathered look, and that's called a, a bleed, you know, by creating a little base and then just kind of throwing that line a little fast. But and that's the way I do it with the um, with the nib brush. I, I tend to throw my line the opposite way. I start with a, a light, thin part by putting very light pressure onto the paper and then placing heavier weight on the paper for the thicker area, kind of like a thin and then thicker, almost like when an airplane is landing. Um, you know, if you could see that up there, that line that I did, you know, kind of, you know, like that. But, um, this brush is damaged, so it's it's not going to give me the fine lines that my actual work brush will. And I refer to a um, airplane landed on a runway. You know, when the airplane lands on the runway, the wheels touch down, and it's light onto the runway. The first set of wheels land. And then as the airplane begins to weigh down its weight and pressure onto the runway and it applies the next set of wheels, then it, you know, it lands down heavy. And that's kind of the way I approach the bleeds when I ink with a, uh, a brush. Very lightly on the runway and then touch down, you know, thicker. Um, and you'll find, you know, there's, there's different ways of, of um, throwing the, your line work and bleeds and stuff with uh, your brush, and you'll find what works for you. So, you know, keep working with your tool, experimenting with your, your tool to find what works for you. Then once you become comfortable enough with your tool, um, and learning line work, um, how to work with a brush or a nib, then that's when you start studying inking and there are some fundamentals, some rules to inking. Um, generally, the image in the foreground is going to have thicker lines. Mid-ground, lines aren't going to be as, as thick, they're going to be a bit more medium background is going to have thinner lines, um, sometimes even broken lines, because you want to push things 
that aren't as important that are in the background. You want to make sure they stay in the back and aren't distracting and that the eye focuses on the primary um, the importance of the image. Uh, it is a storytelling medium so you want to make sure that they're the eye is first drawn to what's important for the for the storytelling and then the rest is secondary and by blacks spotting blacks you can you can even use blacks to help push things um, you can help push things forward or push things back um, so uh, inking learning your light source learning um, rendering, why certain lines, how they work, how they create shape. So it, inking is an art form. Um, you, you do have to be an artist to, to do it. And the, the better artist that you are, the, the better um, your chances are of becoming a very good inker and a lot of the really good inkers are really good artists. Comic books is a storytelling medium, so um, you don't have to learn storytelling when you're an inker. You don't have to focus on that. Um, you know, it's 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 not something that is highly required. Um, but you do have to know what's important on the page you know even though you're not going to have the script um you know you're not going to know what the word balloons are what the story is but but visually just by you know being able to in this case what's important here is the, the figures you know this this image is just you know figures um so the the lines around the figure are, are thicker Behind that is some fog, some smoke coming up from the vent. Then in the background are these shrubs, these bushes. So they're, I did a little like stippling almost around it, like tick lines, almost to create that little texture of um, bushes and a lot of different, you know, levels in there, but without doing a lot of detail, you know, and, that's, and, and Dave didn't put a lot of detail of that because it, we need to push that into the background. That is, um, not really important but it's there to create the um, depth and then down below we have some of the grass and this is a com I ink this with the brush so it's completely different texture than what is done with the figures and then I'm going to not ink this solid black I'm gonna break in some white in there maybe do some line work kind of like what I did here but a lot more and closer together just so there, there isn't solid black, just to separate the ground from the all the black that's in the figures. You can see as I'm spotting the black, there's a lot of it. Batman's and you know, he's underneath um, Solomon Grundy, who's a very large character. So um, he's in a lot of shadow. Plus, you know, he's got his, um, his cape and um, He's, uh, he's got a lot of shadow casting from that. And since Batman is going to be within a, a lot of shadow, a lot of black, um, there may be some things and areas that where you may need to create a halo or reverse inking where you're going to leave some white um, within that black to help push out um, shapes and help bring them out so that things aren't just um, a lot of black to help break up some of the black and um, there is a particular case on here, um, case in point here, 
is um, right here on his back. I left a little bit of white right over here, even though there's no real light source down there, but just to kind of help the shape of Batman. Right up here, um, the penciler left a white around his, his hand in between the parts of the cape, and that's uh, to help show the shape because the light is, there would be more light from up top because the light source on this page is from the top. So you would see that down here in the leg, um, there's a little bit of white. So I inked my line weight right here because I'm debating on whether or not when I come through to ink right here to put a tiny little bit of white line, not all the way up, but just little pieces of it where the light may hit to help bring that out. Um, this one you don't because it has a lot of white around it, but because this is going to be filled in black, and then this would be the only light and this would blend is going to blend it this would all blend in together so this here is to help create um some of the shape and break up that black but i may end up inking just a little bit of a what i did here a little bit of a white line there just to help the um, character and then when i was inking the folds right here there were only um it was penciled and it was with the shape but I decided to leave some white spaces for the lines to go in to show um, white and then here's here's actually where I did what I'm thinking about doing to the leg because Batman um, his bicep actually comes all the way out to here in the pencils but the way it was shaded in it would make his bicep look smaller right here so I create this tiny little bitty white um, halo or reverse inking right there just to separate it and just kind of show his bicep actually is uh, a bit larger Batman is muscular in order to lift this entire hum humongous you know I don't know nine foot man and I don't know maybe like 600 pounds or something so um, Batman needs to be pretty strong so I wanted to be able to keep the muscle tone in there be able to show that just little things that thoughts that go in and how my brain works when I'm working on on a piece it, it is fantasy it is it is comic book but if you base it in just a little bit of reality it seems much more possible even though there's a lot of exaggeration. So keeping that in mind where, you know, Batman's gotta be pretty strong, so I, that was the reason for that decision. And generally, you know, this, particular penciler um, you know his art style has a lot of black so I don't know if you've noticed if the camera picked it up when I was spotting my black right here I crossed the line and that's not a big deal right there I can either bring the line in more right here to cover that up or simply just white out but let's keep the original pretty so we'll bring that line in so you can't tell I ever crossed that line so some mistakes you uh, you work with you, you go with and sometimes are happy accidents So if you're, if you're just joining us and you're wondering why are the videos um, in parts if the videos aren't very long? Um, well, the reason for that, um, several reasons. The main reason, honestly, is because my phone does not want to export a video larger than seven gigabytes. Um, 
I think because I'm running out of storage space and I opted out of getting the largest storage space on my iPhone. Um, I uh, didn't want to spend that much money on, on the phone. <laughs> so um, now I'm running out of space for it. But the other reason is that um, in case you want to stop the video, you know, you don't want to sit through the video that long um, of a video for that long. And, um, you know, you can, you can kind of stop in different chapters, a different point of the evolution of the, um, of this particular image, you know, um, and you can always come back to it and then start part two or part three. So it kind of worked out, you know, kind of like that little extra line that I put over there, kind of a happy accident, you know. You can do that. And what got me started wanting to um, make a video um, is that I, I've seen a lot of videos online that were um, time lapse or people were speeding up uh, the frame rate um, and, and the video would go by really fast. And I thought, to, I mean, several things. I thought, well, that's going to give people the impression that inking comic books goes by really fast. And then, you know, they're going to think, oh, man, this is just, I sh I'm supposed to be doing this fast. Why am I getting frustrated with this? You know, um, you know, maybe, you know, I thought maybe that might happen. Um, the other part is that that people that were doing the tutorials doing a great job, but they weren't explaining what they were doing as they were working. You know, what tools were they using? Why were they using that tool? How were they using that tool? What is the thought process? You know, what goes into inking a comic page? So I wanted to be able to provide that, um, at least for what goes through my mind and my process for inking um, a comic book. And um, so that's that's the reason why I decided to make these uh, these videos because this this is what if you ever wonder what it's like you know this is what it, it's like I mean it's hours and hours of this video you know in the video even with my my video it, it's still shorter than the time that it actually takes to ink a page because. Um, you know, it's not really necessary to have to sit here and, and, and make a video that's 12 hours long. You know, well, this image doesn't take, it isn't going to take 12 hours. It's really just two figures. You know, you can do that in half, half that amount of time. Um, but a lot of comic pages will take 12 hours. You know, um, anywhere from 6 to 12 hours. So if you find yourself unable to even just sit through and watch a video well you're gonna have to really learn some patience because <laughs> you can get a comic it takes it takes a lot longer than that you really you really do have to have patience um you know and uh, you have to be able to to focus and uh, have dedication because um there are a lot of distractions that will come up you know, friends are going to offer to go places. You want to go out to eat or movies or something. They're all going somewhere. So you have to have discipline. And to say, you know, hey, uh, I've got a deadline. This is important. Because as a freelancer, you never, ever want to disappoint. You don't ever want to be late. Because you're the publisher has invested a lot of money in you and a lot of money in the project. And uh, you don't want them losing money. You want them to uh, be happy with the quality of work and the time that it took for you to do the project, to turn pages in. 
and that happens over over time you get experience and you get speed you get faster and you're you get better as far as quality most of the time when you're sent pages they're already behind schedule and they um, need them right away so you, you, you do have to be able to stay focused and keep yourself going and, and um, keep inking stay interested um, and most likely you know you are you are because um, I really enjoy putting down every line I mean just even spotting blacks is fun for me you know because I get to watch the drawing you know it uh, spotting the black can sometimes feel um, like more is done it can or it, it it you know creates the um, tricks your mind and makes you feel as if more is accomplished because you know the blacks are you know uh, filled in there's a lot more contrast in the image um, from the pencils and the paper you know with your inks on applied on there and I I like when I'm spotting the black and I get to see how the image is coming along get to see it at that stage I get excited sometimes I'm like oh it's coming out very well I'm, I'm pleased you know So there, there are different ways of spotting your blacks. People um, use different, different tools um, and things, but generally, it is this way. Um, I like doing comics the way they've always been done. Um, you know the the way you know with the brush and nib and on on um, Strathmore onto paper. You know with ink, I like to have an original to hold and. To look at, you know, it's it's artwork to me. There is a niche market. If you work on original artwork as opposed to digital, uh, I mean, I'm not saying don't do digital. Uh, I'm not against digital um, artwork, but the one of the the neat things about about this is that you can supplement your income. Um, by selling your original art you know you may not sell every page but even selling one or two pages you know because you've already been paid the page rate and to sell that original because it is only that one original it's one of a kind and there is a market out there people do want to have a piece of their favorite comic book, their favorite character by their favorite artist. And it's nice to be able to have extra income. And another way that people are doing that as well is by conventions. They attend conventions and do sketches and then you can also sell originals there at the convention. Um, not only have to sell them online, but you can sell them at the convention. So there's different ways of supplementing your income as an artist, as a freelancer. Because you, uh, as a freelancer, you don't get benefits you don't um, don't have a guarantee of your next project and it is a competitive field so there are lots of people out there all trying to get work from a very small industry you know in the, the comic book industry um, unless you're working for the top two 
um, the, where they offer exclusives contracts and you know you have guaranteed work for um, you know if you sign an exclusive contract for one year three years and you know you've got work um, and from what I'm told some of the lar the larger two companies with an exclusive you know you get benefits um, you become an employee for that amount of time um, but uh, I'm not 100% on that I've just talking to a few artists you know um, it's what I was told as far as an inker goes um, I'm not sure an inker would get an exclusive contract generally that's for the penciler possibly a writer maybe if you're a very popular writer but if you're part of a an art team that's really selling a book uh, then maybe you'll be included on that and get an exclusive but freelancing allows you to work for anyone so you can do as much work as you're able to and that goes back to the discipline scheduling knowing how fast you can do a page and uh, you know that's just something that you learn over time and uh, you will get faster and faster um, over time being a freelancer um, you know you have to have a bit of a, a business sense business mind because you're basically in business for yourself um, you have to be a bit of a salesman you have to go out and um, sell yourself I mean you know um, your talent and your ability to be able to bring in more work so sure it, it is a creative field and a creative um, service you're providing and it's fun but at the same time it is a business that is work so you um, need to be able to uh, look at it as a business as well it's not just you know the part where you're sitting down doing the artwork you have to go out and get the work because it is so competitive no one's going to come out and find you and, and and all of a sudden, you know, give you work. Um, sometimes projects land in your, your lap sometimes. Um, but that's when you put yourself out there, you know, different portfolios and stuff in uh, social media. Um, putting your portfolio, you know, online, either your own website you know, ArtStation, DeviantArt, um, using different social medias, you know, uh, and you got a network, go to conventions, although, you know, today, you don't really, um, I think the only convention where editors are actually doing portfolio reviews um, that I've heard of is the San Diego Comic Con, you know, like the larger conventions. But with today, you know, um, electronic age, you don't have to travel, but you do have to network. So you have to, you know, look into it as, you know, it's a business. Um, and hopefully you will establish yourself and um, at a point where you won't have to work so hard to keep the work coming in. Because you will become one of the artists in the pool of talent that the editor dips into when they need someone you'll be one of the first people they call or you have a penciler who really likes your work I'm referring to an inker as an inker and um, 
likes your work over theirs and you make a great team, then you get work from them. And then, of course, if you can create that partnership with several different pencilers, then, uh, you know, you, you've got more options um, for work. So I'm just generally here just um, spotting the blacks, and, and uh, this is pretty much what, how it is when, you, when I'm spotting blacks. Even though I'm filling in the black, um, I am still conscious of the shapes of the, the artwork. So in areas where there needs to be uh, a halo, a white, or negative, uh, or reverse inking. So when I inked his collar, I wanted the white line to go up a little further to break all the black instead of just black right there. To create that to separate for shape um, and depth. So spotting black isn't just throwing on a bunch of black on the page and just filling in a um, bunch of negative um, space you know um, you also want to um, blend in your your feathering your hatching you want to blend it in so um, I start filling in the black and then at the bottom of my lines I'm, I put a thicker base to blend in so that the line fades from you know it feathers out from black you know and to uh, a smooth transition, you know, and it's not just solid black and then a line, you know, it, it feathers out and it gradually becomes thinner on the line. Um, and generally I'll, I'll go back and touch those up um, either with the, the fine tip of the brush or a, a nib. Generally with the brush, I'll, I'll go back and just kind of touch the base of those bleeds. Um, you know, if, if uh, if they, you know, if I need that. Well, all right, so this is part four of the video. Spotting blacks, uh, some negative inking in there. Hopefully there's been some information here that I've been able to provide for, um, for you that you find helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments uh, section of the YouTube channel um, on the video. You're welcome to my um, Twitter page. It's at Jimmy Reyes Art. Um, my Deviant Art page is my name, Jimmy Reyes. Deviant You're welcome to post any questions that you have there, uh, any comments. They're all welcome. All right, see you in the next video.